Hello and happy spring, happy May. Uh, it's been a very busy spring, I think, throughout our entire city. For me, it's been especially busy uh, as we are in the throes of our budget here at City Hall. Uh, and then many of you know, uh, serving as mayor is technically a part-time position, so I have a, another job at Grand Valley State University where I teach in the Honors College. Uh, so it's been a busy spring as I finish up teaching there and getting my grades in. Uh, but looking ahead uh, and looking at what's happening now, there's a couple exciting things I want to talk about, and then I want to end on uh, just touching on an incident that happened here in our, in our city this week. Uh, so the big thing, as I said, is the budget. Uh, we are several weeks into our budget process. Uh, as you recall, the budget process, the city manager brings forward a budget recommendation to the full city commission, and then we spend time every single week going through a budget process. The big thing for you to know is that our budget uh, this year is roughly $643 million, and that captures the budget for the entire city. So uh, everything from our water system and refuse and uh, recycling to our streets and sidewalks and lights, street lights that we pay for and maintain to our fire department and police department and parks department and economic development department. So it's a pretty lengthy uh, budget book uh, this year, hundreds of pages, but we put out a great citizen's guide. So if you haven't had a chance to take a look at our citizen's guide, it's incredibly informative, breaks down really the key elements of the budget. And then this Tuesday, so May 16th, uh, at 7 p.m., we'll be holding a hearing specifically to hear your thoughts on the budget recommendations. So that's at 7 p.m. on Tuesday the 16th here at City Hall uh, in our ninth floor chamber. So if you want to weigh in on the budget recommendations, now is your time to do that. If you don't want to come down here to City Hall, that's fine. You can email us, you can call us, uh, you can send us a letter. So there's lots of ways to connect with us. And I know I hear from many of you uh, throughout the week, not just on Tuesdays. A couple other things, uh, one thing that's in the budget actually, uh, and that we just started this week, is that we have worked in partnership with the Rapid to redo our downtown shuttle, or as we call it, the dash. Uh, so starting this week, we have a new uh, circular, as we call it, route. So it goes all the way from downtown over to Leonard Street, back up the west side and back downtown. Every 15 minutes, it's running Wednesday through Sunday. Uh, from, let's see, 7 a.m. Wednesday through Friday all the way to midnight. And then on Saturdays, we'll be going till 1 a.m. Sunday, it's a shorter uh, period of time, 11 to 5 p.m. And then as soon as we have staffing in place, we'll expand that and it'll be seven days a week. So hopefully you'll get out there and try the new dash and find it helpful. Uh, and as I said, it has stops every 15 minutes. Another exciting thing uh, in partnership with the Rapid is that they are now their buses, I should say, uh, are now using the renewable natural gas that we are producing right here at our biodigester over at our wastewater treatment facility. So as you recall, we're taking waste from the waste stream. We're going through, having it go through a biodigester or an anaerobic digester process. It's creating renewable natural gas. DTE is then taking that gas and uh, it's being made available to power our buses. So it's a great win for our community as well as the environment. A couple other things I wanna to touch on. Um, this week is Public Service Recognition Week. So earlier this week I did a proclamation. Uh, all year long we wanna, we wanna appreciate our public servants, um, but especially this week, we wanna highlight the incredible work that they do day in and day out to make sure that our community and residents are served well. So if you see someone out there working, uh, if they work for the city or the county or the state, please pause and thank them for their work. Uh, and then last, uh, the last thing I wanna to touch on is a critical incident that happened yesterday at Stocking Elementary School. For the fourth time um, this year, we had a student bring a gun to school. Uh, Yesterday, the third grader that brought the gun to school, it was a, a loaded handgun. Uh, a horrible tragedy could have happened. Uh, and fortunately, a student, another student, saw the gun and reported it right away, which is, which is great. Um, however, the responsibility shouldn't fall on children to report when there's a gun in the school. We need to prevent guns from getting in the hands of children in the first place. And that falls on all of us as adults, especially adults who own guns. Uh, so yesterday I joined Dr. Roby and other partners at Grand Rapids Public Schools and our police chief, encouraging everyone who owns a gun to make sure that it is securely locked, especially if you have children in your home. 
There's a number of uh, bills right now moving, moving through the state. One of them will make it a requirement to lock up guns and secure guns, uh, but a law isn't going to prevent prevent guns from getting in the hands of kids. It's up to us to actually secure the guns and make sure that they're not accessible to children. And that's one piece, right? That's one, one piece of preventing violent crimes and tragedies from happening. The city, we're doing our part. You'll see in the budget, we're investing funds into crime prevention efforts in our neighborhoods, violence prevention efforts with Urban League through Cure Violence. We have summer camps for youth. We have youth employment programs that we're funding. We have recreational programs all, all summer long. We're working closely with GRPS. GRPS has a strong plan to provide security in their schools, but making sure that our children are safe and reducing gun violence and really violence in general takes all of us. So I'm asking you to step up, be a part of the solution, and please make sure that our children are, are safe, not just in school, uh, but in our neighborhoods and in our community. Um, so with that, I will end this update and encourage you to continue to be a part of the solution.